Um, we are looking at the theme of life in the spirit. And we started last week, didn't we? Um, looking at that. And we continue this week and we will look at some teaching actually on who is the Holy Spirit. And I'll explain uh, that just a, a little bit later in the service, how we're going to do that. Um, it's a morning worship service, so no communion um, today. But at the end of the service, when I give the family news and notices, uh, I'll let you know when the next communion service will be and so on. Um, but can I just invite us all to bow our heads? and to pray. And the invitation in this prayer is for us to open our hearts. Lord, we come to you today in the name of Jesus. We honor him, our Supreme Lord our master, our saviour, our example, our friend. And we honour him as the one who lived and died and was raised from the dead and ascended to heaven. And who then gives us the gift of the Holy Spirit from heaven. The gift that he received from his father. And so as we honour you, Lord Jesus, we open our hearts to receive your Holy Spirit. That we might receive the fullness of God through him. That we might live our lives in the Spirit. <clears throat> Please help us and teach us. Wherever we are in our Christian faith, in our Christian walk, in our experience today, may we, Lord, know more of the Spirit in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to uh, worship together and continue to open our hearts together uh, as we sing two songs back to back. So just a time for us to, in an extended time of song worship, to raise our hearts and our souls to the Lord. Uh, here in church, if that means it's easy for you, best for you, seated or, or kneeling or standing, whatever <laughs> we do, or if you want to wander over towards uh, on the window or the font, or just happy to say where you are, let's do that. But whichever way we do it, uh, let's just open our hearts to the Lord anew and afresh today to receive from him. Thank you, Lord. So 
Thank you. Please be seated. It's uh, it's great to pray on your own and worship on your own, but even in this limited way, where we can't really sing, and we're all distant and we're wearing masks, it, it's a joy just to be together and to uh, and to worship God together, isn't it? You just get somehow a greater sense of God, the Holy Spirit, amongst us because you bring some of Him and I bring some of Him, and we, and and when we're together, there's a lot of God. <laughs> I'm not sure that's a theological term, but you know what I'm saying. Um, it's good fellowship. It's the fellowship yeah. of the Spirit. Yeah. And uh, that uh, is made real as we're together, as God's people, bringing our own lives and our own experience and our own prayers and our own selves to God together. Yeah. And we strengthen by it. So we thank God for that. Um, we're going to have uh, this reading today, just the one reading today, and um, I'm inviting um, Mo Clark, all the way from Sunny Clayton, <laughs> via Zoom. Again, Mo, are you there? Good morning, yes. Good morning, uh, to, to read for us, if that's okay. And um, you're stewarding, you're stewarding, aren't you, today, Ian? Will you do us a favour? Once Mo's finished reading, just to keep up. No, hang on, not, not you, is it, Ian? It's, it's uh, sorry, Alex uh, in Sunny Mere Heath. Alex, would you do me a favour? When Mo's finished reading, could you just keep her um, unmuted so I can just say a few words after she's read the reading? Okay, thanks, Mo. morning the first reading is taken from John 15 verses verse 26 through to the end of John 16 1 to 15. The work of the Holy Spirit. When the Advocate comes whom I will send to you from the Father the Spirit of Truth who goes out from the Father he will testify about me and also you also must testify for you have been with me from the beginning all this I have told you so that you will not fall away they will put you out of the synagogue in fact the time is coming when anyone who kills you will think they are offering a service to God they will do such things because they have not known the Father or me. I have told you this so that when their time comes, you re will remember that I warned you about them. I did not tell you this from the beginning because I was with you, but now I am going to him who sent me. None of you asks me, where are you going? Rather, you are filled with grief, because I have said these things. But very truly, I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment about sin, because people do not believe in me, about righteousness, because I am going to the Father, where you can see me no longer, and about judgment, because the prince of this world now stands condemned. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear, but when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears. And he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. 
That is why I said, the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Um, thank you, Mo, and, and uh, you're still with us, and uh, you, you can still speak if, uh, if you want to. But I just wanted to use this opportunity while you're on screen, if you like, while you're with us at this point of the service, to um, just celebrate a very, very important milestone for you tomorrow. Um, Mo is uh, 80 tomorrow. So God bless you, Mo. Um, we, we love you. We appreciate you. We thank God for your Christian example, your spirit of prayer, your passion, your devotion, and everything that you bring to us here at St. Paul's. And we here at St. Paul's love you and just wish you well. Um, on this really great milestone tomorrow. God bless you on your 80th birthday. You don't have to say anything, you don't have to make a speech, but uh, you're there. So thank you so much for being a part of us. And thank you. Bless you. Okay. Um, we're looking at um, who is the Holy Spirit and that reading from Mo um, was uh, Jesus speaking. Um, in the Last Supper, sharing those words, saying stuff like, it's best if I go so that uh, I can send the Holy Spirit. He said, if you think it's good now, it's going to be even better then. Uh, and he, he begins to just explain who the Holy Spirit is. Um, and so in preparation for this morning's sermon, I was looking at, if you like, a teaching content to just give us a foundation of who the Holy Spirit is. And then as I was doing it, I uh, re-watched the Alpha video, Who is the Holy Spirit? And I thought, you know what, I can't beat that. <laughs> it's so well put together. So what we're gonna do is watch that uh, Alpha video on who is the Holy Spirit. It lasts for about 25, 27 minutes. Um, and it's full of rich, rich content. So um, let's enjoy this together. Thanks, Ian. So when I arrived on the Athol weekend, um, my immediate desire was to leave. Uh, I spent most of the time avoiding anyone who looked remotely like a leader. Um, and I kept in the in the hall where it happened there was a back door and I just would constantly leave to go out the door to have a cigarette um, I didn't even smoke I just had to <laughs> have a cigarette it was uh, it all felt pretty strange and, and foreign and I didn't really want to be there yeah that was my immediate reaction avoid leaders smoke cigarettes avoid people my leader was very tall he was very nice guy. He's still a friend of mine now, but at the time I didn't really know him. And he, on the Saturday morning, approached me and said, "Can I pray for you?" And I said, "No." And he went, "Okay." And so that was that. I, you know, resisted him and whatever else it was that came with him. And then the next day, he was, you know, you got to give him credit for perseverance because he approached me again and said, "Can I?" The similar kind of earnest face. <laughs> can, I, can I pray for you? And I said, okay, if it'll shut you up, I guess you can pray for me. The first word he said was, he just said, Lord, like that, with his head bowed. And he clearly had been eating kippers for breakfast because I got this waft of uh, fish, yeah, which was a poor start. Um, he said, Lord, um, please bless Charlie with your... Holy Spirit, and as he was praying, I sort of didn't want to shut my eyes because, you know, you want to be aware of what's going on. And so I was looking up at him and I was aware as he was praying that I could see this Adam's apple. His eyes were shut and it was, I was just staring at it, it was moving up and down. So that became my fixation. And then when I got tired of looking at that, he kept praying, I looked at the ground and I stared at this carpet and the carpet was truly ugly. Like one of those carpets where I imagined the board meeting they'd had about the carpet and the swatches and the big discussion, which is the ugliest bit of carpet we can find. And so those are my preoccupations were his Adam's apple, the carpet and the strong smell of fish. 
Um, and I wasn't particularly aware of any Holy Spirit or any kind of divine anything except my sort of wild thoughts and uh, defenses. Um, and, uh, and anyway, after that, I heard him say, Amen. And I just said, Amen. Amen. That's a relief. Um, and, uh, and he smiled, and uh, he has this incredible nasal sigh, and he just did this long, profound nasal sigh, and I was relieved that he was pleased. He moved on to someone else, and I was left to my own thoughts and time, and, and I did feel genuinely a deep sense, a remarkable sense of peace. Now, quite why that was, whether that was because I was relieved that nothing weird had happened, maybe it was God giving me peace, but I genuinely felt peace, and I, so much so that I went and sat in the corner with my arms folded and just sort of observed the rest of the, the session um, with a large grin on my face. So that was my first experience. Essentially, it was littered with odd experiences, but at the end of it, it was peace. Who is the Holy Spirit? I don't know, I'm sorry. I don't know. Speed of the sun. That's a tough one. Um, uh, it's... Uh... God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. They're all like a trinity. Angels? I don't know. It's, it's God. I think the Holy Spirit is different for everyone. Wouldn't that be your conscience? Ha, I have no, I don't really have a, a lot of, I don't know, I don't know who the Holy Spirit is, I mean, I don't know. Third person of the Trinity? Um, the Holy Spirit? I've never even really put much thought into that. technology has brought us, there's nothing quite like the natural world. It's awe-inspiring, it's breathtaking, it's life-giving. When I was growing up, I didn't hear much about the Holy Spirit. The only time the Holy Spirit was mentioned was in school assembly prayers, which always finished with the same words, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit seemed like an afterthought, at best a kind of vague supernatural force, and at worst something strange or even a bit freaky. But in the Bible, the Holy Spirit isn't a vague force, but a person that you can know. He isn't an optional extra either, he's front and central. And he wasn't a recent invention, he was there from the very beginning. And everything, all of this, was made through him. In the beginning there was God. The earth was empty, formless, dark, and the Spirit of God hovered over the waters. And God said, let there be light. So there was day followed by night. With each new day came new creation, vast oceans, the vaster sky, the earth green and growing. The Spirit of God, the Creator Spirit, brought out of the chaos the cosmos, out of disorder, order, out of confusion, harmony, out of deformity, beauty. The cosmos, galaxies, the sun, the moon, and every star. Creatures of every shape and size to swim, fly, and roam the land. Then God created man and woman in his image and breathed life into them. And God sent his spirit upon his chosen people to guide them, to give them gifts for a particular time and purpose to fulfill God's work on earth. God sent his spirit upon a man called Bezalel, giving him the gift of creativity and artistic knowledge to craft and shape precious metals and gems into art, into a house for the Lord. The Spirit of God came upon Gideon, a weak and fearful man, so he became a brave warrior who saved God's people. Samson, who was taken prisoner. God sent his Spirit to give him the extraordinary strength to break free from the ropes tied around him. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him in power, 
The ropes on his arms became like charred flax, and the bindings dropped from his hands. God filled others with his spirit for prophecy, to be his mouthpiece, bringing direction and hope to his people. The Spirit came upon Isaiah to bring good news of hope. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoners. Upon Ezekiel, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. Through the prophet Joel, we learn who this promise is for and how it will happen. I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. God's promise was that he would do something new. Not just for particular people at particular times, for particular tasks, but for everyone, all people, regardless of position, age, gender, ethnicity, and race. Then with the birth of Jesus, it was like a trumpet sounded, and everyone surrounding the birth of Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit. Mary, the mother of Jesus, Elizabeth, Mary's cousin, John the Baptist, and then Jesus at his baptism. The Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form. Full of the Holy Spirit, he began to teach, heal the sick, bring freedom to the captives, to heal the brokenhearted. So often what happens in the Old Testament in a physical way happens in the New Testament in a spiritual way. As Bezalel was given the skill to craft and design the temple, the Holy Spirit always brings new things to our lives. New attitudes, new desires, new ways of worship, new songs. Whatever you do in your workplace, the Spirit of God wants to fill you with skill, ability and creativity. Like Gideon, God uses people who feel weak, inadequate, ill-equipped. As God's Spirit gave Samson physical strength to break free from his bindings, so today the Holy Spirit brings freedom to break the habits, the addictions, the things that keep people spiritually bound. The Counselor, the Helper, the Gift Giver, the Guide. The Holy Spirit softens our hearts. He takes away our hearts of stone and gives us hearts of flesh. The Holy Spirit who helps us to break free from bad habits also harnesses a desire to love others and to help those in need, the poor, the brokenhearted, the captives. The experience of the Holy Spirit is not only about what is felt, but also about making a difference in the world. He can use you. At the age of 21, Jackie Pullinger boarded the cheapest ship she could find stopping off at the greatest number of countries and prayed to know where to disembark. She arrived in Hong Kong in 1966 when the Cultural Revolution was beginning in China and a flood of refugees was about to burst across the border into Hong Kong. More and more people crammed into a place called the Walled City, a small densely populated lawless area. Jackie Pullinger has spent nearly half a century living there working with prostitutes, heroin addicts and gang members. In a talk she gave to a church back in England, she started by saying, God wants us to have soft hearts and hard feet. The trouble with so many of us is that we have hard hearts and soft feet. I think a soft heart is, I don't know how to explain it really, but you probably need yours broken in order for it to become soft. Um, and that's when you begin to realize that, that the Son of God um, would have died for you if you'd been the only person. And then that the, the hard feat is to go on loving them, to go on loving them, to persevere.
Through the prophet Joel, God promised that the Holy Spirit would no longer be reserved for particular people at particular times for particular purposes, but that he would be for all people. Yet this promise remained unfulfilled for many, many years. Then with the birth of Jesus, we see a marked increase in the activity of the Spirit. Everyone surrounding the birth of Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit. To Mary, the mother of Jesus, an angel said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Then there's Mary's cousin, Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leapt in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. John the Baptist was the first person to make the link between the Holy Spirit and Jesus. John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but one more powerful than I will come. The thongs of whose sandals I'm not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. The original meaning of the word baptize was to overwhelm, to immerse, to plunge, to drench. And that's what the Spirit wants to do. He wants to drench us, to fill us. Sometimes I feel a bit like a dry sponge. You know one of those real sponges, which when it's very dry, even when you put it in the water, initially it doesn't absorb any water because it's so hard and crusty on the outside. But then if you leave that sponge in the water, the edges begin to soften. And once the edges have softened, then the sponge can absorb so much water. The sponge is in the water, but the water is also in the sponge. And when you lift it out, the water is literally pouring out. And that's how we're meant to be, full of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus himself was completely filled with the Holy Spirit. When he was baptized by John in the River Jordan, immediately the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. In a synagogue in his hometown, Nazareth, Jesus read the words from Isaiah 61 and applied them to himself. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he's anointed me to preach good news to the poor. Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. On another occasion, Jesus went to a Jewish festival called the Feast of Tabernacles. Thousands of Jews would go to Jerusalem to celebrate the feast, to thank God for providing water in the past year, and they prayed that he would do the same again in the coming year. And there at the feast, Jesus predicted the coming of the Spirit for all people. On the last and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, will have streams of living water flowing from within. By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time, the Spirit had not been given, since Jesus had not yet been glorified. And Jesus being glorified meant Jesus being crucified and raised to life. He was saying that the promises of Jeremiah and Ezekiel and the others would not be fulfilled in a place, but in a person, in himself. After his death and resurrection, while eating with the disciples, Jesus said to them, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my Father has promised, which you've heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And so they waited. They waited and waited. It's like a champagne bottle has been shaken and shaken. And then finally, on the day of Pentecost, the cork flies off. Suddenly, a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Something amazing and supernatural was happening and people didn't know how to explain it so they gave natural explanations like they've had too much wine, they're drunk. And then Peter got up and said, let me explain to you what's happening. These people are not drunk, it's only nine o'clock in the morning. This is the Holy Spirit. This was prophesied in the Old Testament and Peter quotes the prophet Joel. In the last days God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. And then he says something even more amazing. He says, this is for you. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. 
The promise of the Father, this promise of life, of harmony, of beauty for ashes, of creativity, of newness, of strength, of freedom, compassion, anointing, of living water, the gift of the Holy Spirit, who once came upon particular people at particular times for particular purposes, is now for you. Pope John Paul II said, the Spirit is always awesome whenever he intervenes. He arouses astonishing new events. He radically changes people and history. When I was a teenager, I remember going on a Christian week away with my best friend, Dave. And we arrived there and everyone was divided into two groups based on age. And we obviously really wanted to be in the older group. It was so much cooler. They'd sit around on the grass talking about God and dating and girls. Whereas we sat on the inside, colouring pictures of Old Testament characters. It was so boring. Anyway, on the last evening, I couldn't find Dave anywhere. And then I found out that he'd sneaked into the older group and they'd been praying for each other to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And as they finished their session, I could see them all come outside laughing and singing and hugging and something amazing and positive had clearly happened. But I was so annoyed, I was so upset that I'd missed out. And to add insult to injury, the girl that I liked had just refused to hold my hand. And eventually one of these students happened to wander over to me. And he asked me how I was, and being British, I obviously had said, I'm fine, thanks. And he said, but can I pray for you? And I said, yeah, all right then. And I remember he prayed this really simple prayer. He said, thank you, Lord, that you love Toby. Please fill him with your Holy Spirit, with your joy and your peace. And almost immediately, I began to feel this overwhelming sense of love filling my body, God's love. And the more that we waited, the more this feeling of love and joy grew. So much so that this smile broke out on my face and then I started laughing. And I can't describe it any other way than this. I just knew for the first time that God loved me. And I was so happy, so happy that I got up and I jumped into the swimming pool fully clothed. I was born in Hungary in the 1980s, and this was at the time when the country was still under the communist regime. And what this meant in terms of faith is that it was not discussed, not at the workplace, not in schools, not at home. And I grew up with the notion that religious people were disillusioned, uneducated, or just not very intelligent. In my 20s, I moved to England. One Sunday, a friend of mine invited me out for coffee. And it was really nice, but at the end of it, she said, um, I'm going to church now, do you want to come with me? And I really didn't feel like it. But then I thought, well, I have nothing else to do. I'll go along, and if it's too weird, I'll just leave. And to my biggest surprise, the speaker that night didn't seem disillusioned or uneducated. And actually, some of what he said made a lot of sense. So that confused me. But at the, at the end of the service, they said, if you have questions about any of this, try Alpha. So that's what I did. I went along to Alpha and I listened to all the talks and um, I discussed them with my small group. And I must say, I was the most cynical person in the group and I probably had most of the questions. And I think I was quite aggressive in my approach. But what really got to me is that they have loads of patience and love and they really took time to answer all my questions. I went back to church, but that night was different because it felt like as if everything was for me. The sermon, the prayers, even the songs. And at the end of the service, the pastor said, I feel like there is somebody here who feels broken. And I instantly knew it was for me because I had been feeling broken for a very long time. But there was no way I was going to go up to the front. <laughs> then he said, or you could echo this prayer in your heart. And then I, th and I thought, okay, why not? So I closed my eyes and I said, Jesus, if you are real, come into my life. And at that moment, the worship band started playing a song that kept repeating the line, there is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. 
this huge wave of emotion came over me and there was a huge warmness around my heart, like when a heart is being mended. And I never cry in public, but I couldn't stop sobbing. And I guess I didn't even have the time to feel embarrassed about it. A friend of mine came over to pray for me. And I didn't know it then, but I know now that what happened is that I got filled with the Holy Spirit. Everyone's experience is different, but this is the amazing promise of the Father. The gift of the Holy Spirit is no longer just for particular people at particular times, for particular purposes. It's for everyone. And the Holy Spirit is for you and for me. And we're going to respond in uh, sung worship and prayers. Um, so for our sung worship again, um, sit or stand or kneel, but we've got two songs together back to back and let's just use this time again to uh, say to the Lord, please come, come by your Holy Spirit and you're fresh in my life. Amen. Of the Lord, the Holy One is 
we thank you for your presence with us and in us, both here in church and wherever we are at home by Zoom. Thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to hand over to Alex, who's going to continue our response today. Morning, Alex. And she's going to do it in prayer. Thank you. Can you hear God bless me? bless you, Alex. <laughs> Thank you. What? Again? Can you hear me? Loud and clear. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. As we just heard in that song, Spirit, breathe on us. Let's remain in that attitude of worship as we pray together. At the end of the video we watched and partway through, we were reminded that the Holy Spirit is no longer for particular people at particular times. It's for everyone. So spirit, breathe on us. Holy Spirit, we invite you to come and fill us to overflowing. Holy Spirit, would you fall afresh on us today? Please reveal yourself to us in a new way, wherever we are and whatever we are doing. And we say the response together. Spirit of the living God, come fall afresh on me. Come wake me from my sleep. Blow through the caverns of my soul and pour in me to overflow. Holy Spirit, please fall afresh on our country. Please guide our Prime Minister and all who are working in government. Be with our Queen as she continues to grieve and adapt to a new way of life without her husband. And as we remember our Queen this morning, we also remember quietly in our hearts anyone who we know is suffering in body, mind or spirit. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, fall afresh on them today. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the amazing work of the rollout of the vaccine. Lord, thank you for the reduction in the spread of the COVID-19 virus and thank you for signs of hope. Holy Spirit, would you flood into those countries who so desperately need you? Especially today, we pray for India at this time. Spirit of the living God, come fall afresh on me. Come wake me from my sleep. Blow through the caverns of my soul and pour in me to overflow. Holy Spirit, we welcome you into our hearts. Please come and have your way. As we look to a new week ahead, would you guide us, lead us to the place that you have called us to be? Lord, would you use us for your glory? As the launch of thy kingdom come takes place this week, we are invited to pray, come Holy Spirit, so that friends and family, neighbours and colleagues might come to faith in Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, encourage us to join with others and take up this opportunity to pray. As we enter Mental Health Awareness Week, we ask that you would fall afresh upon us. Help us to put our trust in you remove any anxieties, fears, depression that we might have and comfort us in the arms of your love. Encourage us to seek medical or professional help when we think we or those we love might need it. Lord, please help us this week to look out for others who might be struggling with their mental health. Please give us opportunities to listen to others and to share the good news of you with them. Holy Spirit, would you fall afresh on us? Would you help us to overflow with your love? That wherever we go this week, people will notice something different about us. Lord, help us to stand out for you, so others will want to know more about you. Holy Spirit, help us to become more aware of your presence. And please forgive us when we don't turn to you first. As we wait with our hands held out, 
would you fall afresh on us today? And we say together, Spirit of the living God, come fall afresh on me. Come wake me from my sleep. Blow through the caverns of my soul. Pour in me to overflow. Amen. And as we continue in an attitude of prayer, let's listen to the words of that response in a song. Thank you, Ian. Oh my. 
Thanks, Alex, for leading us in those prayers and allowing us to share in that song, which may be new for many people, certainly new for me, um, but very refreshing. Thank you so much. Deep breath. And uh, if God is doing good work in your life and your heart, let that continue as I go through the family news. No one let, let this get in the way. But uh, I do need to share the family news um, at this time as we come to the end of our service. Um, you'll see there that tomorrow morning at 10.30, um, our prayer team meets by Zoom. And if you'd like to be part of that, part of that prayer team, then uh, just let me know. And the prayer is intercessory prayer where we pray for needs of people uh, in our church family, in our uh, home, own families and um, other friends and people that we might know. That's tomorrow. And it is Mental Health Awareness Week. Um, as, um, as Alex prayed about. I'm not sure if we've got a separate slide for that. There we go. Yes, I thought we might. And what we thought we would do under uh, this Mental Health Awareness Week is just um, highlight the fact that we've got the wonderful prayer garden, Garden of Hope, around the back of the church, which is looking even more magnificent day by day, I think. Um, my little prayer cell, the, the prayer team is divided into little groups where we pray together in smaller groups still. We met um, uh, around the back on Thursday outdoors, and it included Sue Goodwin and Mo, Mo Trudell couldn't be with us, but Alan Thorley was uh, wandering around, and we, we nabbed him, and he, and he joined us in our prayers, and we had a lovely time, didn't we? So I'm talking to Sue, who's here in church this morning, and I think part of the beauty of it was just sitting outside. It was actually sun shining and not cold and not raining, and the birds were singing and the cross was overshadowing us and it just felt like a very, very special time. Um, it's there for us to use, for you to use, for you to advertise actually and just talk to friends maybe that might just want to come and maybe just use that time to, um, maybe they might not pray, but they might pray, but certainly a place to relax and to, to maybe have a sandwich, a picnic. Um, so please enjoy that time there in the in the uh, Garden of Hope. Wednesday is the second of our Bible course, starting at seven and finishing uh, just after eight, actually about eight fifteen. Um, but it didn't feel like that; it just felt as if it really zoomed by. Uh, not because we were doing it on Zoom, but it did zoom by. Um, but if you are not part of that and you'd like to join that, or you just um, send an email to admin at admin at stpaulsonline.co.uk and we'll uh, make sure that you get an invitation to join us for that. On Thursday of this week, which is Ascension Day, the church will be open finally again for private prayer um, between 9 and 1 p.m and it's the start of thy kingdom come and the emphasis is on praying for uh, a few people they're suggesting and we're happy to take the suggestion of five people that we would like to see come to faith um, friends family people that we might know neighbors colleagues and um, so join with us uh, for that private prayer that uh, thursday morning and in the evening we're going to have an Ascension Day service, 7 p.m. till 8 p.m. And um, Sue Goodwin will be preaching. It will be a communion service. It will be like a Sunday morning in the sense that you'll get an invitation. Um, you can come to church if you want to. Uh, just let me know if you're coming so we don't get uh, over a certain number. Um, and join us by Zoom otherwise. And it will be um, a PowerPoint liturgical service with communion, as I say, and uh, that will be offered 7 p.m. on Thursday, Ascension Day. And next week, we continue in the theme of life in the spirit, and I will be leading and preaching in our morning worship, no communion next week either, uh, for the Sunday morning, 
and we'll be looking at preparing for Pentecost. Pentecost will be two weeks today, the day we celebrate as the coming of the Holy Spirit, the birth of the church. And next week, we're talking about how do we prepare for Pentecost. Open house, online, um, grab yourself a cuppa and join for a social time together online. And that is on Wednesday, the 26th of May at 10.30. And you can um, access that um, by looking at that information there, which you can revisit on the website. And uh, if you're struggling to do either of those things, just uh, give me a bell on the church office or email me and we'll make sure that you get the details so that you can join that if you wish to. And again, um, Food Bank and Affordable Foods, we say thank you for all the stuff that's um, been donated. Please continue to do so. And uh, that's much, much appreciated. Thank you very much. Okay, that's all the family news that I'd like to share this morning. Um, apart from just saying that probably next Sunday, 16th, might be in a position to share any possible new guidelines with regards to as we progress out of uh, the pandemic. I'm waiting. Uh, I mean, I'm reading what you're reading on, on the BBC News and, and, and newspapers and on the internet and so on, but I'm waiting. I need to wait for the official Church of England guidelines which come after the official government guidelines and I would imagine next Sunday I might be able to share um, any change of protocol um, you know for the next stage of coming out of uh, out of um, this pandemic okay um, so we come to right at the end of our service and we're going to Continue by worshipping and opening our hearts to the Lord. Let him reign. Uh, again, here in church, um, if you would like to stand as we mime, uh, then we can, uh, we can do that and lift our hearts to the Lord. to burst when you hear that quiet whisper and the fire begins to burn when you know deep down inside you there is something you must do let the Holy Spirit make his home in you let him rest When you're walking through the darkness And the mountain seems too high When the ocean waves surround you And the flame begins to die When you face those times of trouble But you know His love is true Let the Holy Spirit make His home in you Let Him rest
we're going to uh, share our daily prayer, our St. Paul's daily prayer together. Lord Jesus, please save us and help us put to flight all sin and sickness and bring in your kingdom of love, joy and peace. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, may that blessing rest upon you now and always. Amen. God bless you. For us here in church, just wait for um, Susie Manford to shepherd it out. We'll be good right to the end, won't we? And these rules and regulations just for our benefit and everybody else's benefit. And uh, for everyone uh, via Zoom, just checking the time. Quarter two, give ourselves five minutes comfort break. And if you want to come back with a tea and a coffee or a chat, you'd be very welcome. And if you need to go, God bless you. Give you a great Sunday. What's left of it.